So I was just editing the video that you're currently watching and I realized that I didn't bring up something that's extremely important for us to talk about um, and I thought that it would be incredibly irresponsible if I simply ignore the context in which this vlog was filmed and that is the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. So I am not an expert on this topic um, I'm not even going to dive into the details of it, but I do think that we all know whether or not that was the right decision. And I wanted to point out that when we read the news, there is so much negativity in the news. Um, and it would seem like with a lot of problems that we're facing today, like COVID-19, the climate crisis, the Venezuelan crisis, the Rohingya crisis, the Uyghur humanitarian crisis, the proxy wars in Middle East, um, the, the military coup in Myanmar, etc. That when we read the news about all of these problems in our world, it would seem like a lot of them cannot be reversed. And that's true, they cannot be reversed. But hope is not lost. And here's why. A lot of you who watch my videos, I believe, would be a bit younger than me, or a bit older than me, essentially around my age. And over time, as the years progress, you will graduate um, either from a tertiary institution or a university and at some point in your life you will be taking up a position of power and it doesn't have to be on the global stage it could be as a manager in your company as a CEO as an entrepreneur as an activist in your community fighting for something that you truly believe in. Uh, if you want to as a political leader, as a diplomat, as um, someone in the military, you know, and it is so important to learn from the mistakes that have been made by our predecessors, the mistakes that have been made by the leaders in our world today. It is so important for us to learn from that and to make sure that when we do get in those positions of power, that we don't repeat the same mistakes. A lot of the problems that we face in our world today are ego-driven. Make sure you don't let ego get in the way of doing what is right. Make sure that you empathize with the people that you lead so that you know the weight of your decisions. So yeah, and that is why hope is not lost because when our generation does step into those positions, let's make sure to do the right thing. Let's make sure to learn from the mistakes made today. Let's make sure to not repeat them so that we leave this world a better place. A very good morning. Today I have an exploratorium workshop of uh, the how science works more and then after that I have quite a number of things I need to get done and then at night at about 10 p.m. there is a meeting for my CCA LS camp.
very noisy here and you probably can't hear me but I'm heading to the life science club room so that I can return these because we had game trials too last week and yeah I have to bring this home I just spent the next few hours going through the LSM 2105 Molecular Genetics Mod Lecture and it went on and on and on for like two hours and it was this particular lecture was about the variations in Mendelian genetics i.e. non-Mendelian inheritance but oh my god I didn't really understand everything because it was just yeah it got a bit complicated when the lecturer started talking about the the many different modes of or the the many different underlying mechanisms of um, each type of variation anyway um, I'm sure it's just a matter of inexperience rather than me being dumb but I didn't really have much time to think about it anymore because it was time for lunch You know, I've walked past this area so many times, I never noticed that there was a linkway. The lesson here is that you don't see what you don't know. Honestly, I'm very lost. I'm supposed to look for S12, but I don't know where it is. Oh. In this exploratorium, we were supposed to use the scientific method to discover why certain things sink while other things float, and of course we know it as density. So now, in this particular experiment that you're looking at, we kept the mass constant while changing the volume by using different cylinders. And so we discovered one variable of density, that the smaller the volume, the greater it will sink. Alright, we just finished the exploratorium. Right now, I have quite a lot of work to do, so we're gonna get to bed. This is me stressing up for no reason. It happens. happened was uh, last year, I mean in my first year I decided to dedicate all my time for CCAs to Ellis Camp and that's why I didn't take part in any hall activities. So right now I'm looking for a new hall if given the opportunity to win. I was just yeah, filling out uh, an application form for PGP House. Anyway right now I'm just gonna go get some waffles or some snack. And then at night at about 10 p.m. there's a meeting for Ellis Camp again. <laughs> So I just wanted to jump in for a while because I have a bit of time now because I finished everything that was on my to-do list for today. It's a pretty, pretty like short to-do list uh, relative to the other days. Anyway, um, I wanted to jump in just to share a bit about what I've been thinking and what's been on my mind over the past month or so. Um, and recently, I've, it's gonna sound a bit weird. But I've been thinking a lot about mortality 
you know, my own mortality and just mortality in general, right? And my study table, I'll, I'll put it, I'll show it on the screen right now. Like on my study, at my study table, I have this life chart. And when I look at the life chart, I'm like turning 20 years old in a few weeks time. And that to me is just mind boggling. Like I remember being seven years old, going into primary one, like on my first day of school. And I just thought that I had all the time in the world. And when I look at the the, the almost like 20 years of boxes that have been shaded compared to the rest of my life assuming I live to 100 years old right when I look at the ratio I like it it sort of brings everything into perspective because now I'm like oh you know just three more rounds of how I've lived and I'm gone and this also reminds me of something else that I read in Jay Shetty's book, Think Like a Monk, and you know, there's this story about a monk, and he visited a king in some like in some country, and then he he asked the monk, "Can I stay at your hotel?" Obviously, it's not a hotel, but he he asked the monk. Uh, the monk asked the king, "Like, can I stay at your hotel?" And the king replied, "This is not a hotel. This is a palace, right?" And then. <laughs> The monk probed the king a bit and was like, Who stayed in this place before you? My father, the previous king, the king replied. And who stayed in this place before the previous king? His father, my grandfather. You know, doesn't that sound like a hotel to you? said the monk. So it's it's a very like it's a very simple story about how like Earth is basically like a hotel. Right, people come, people go. So while you're here on that, um, you don't want it to just be good while you're alive, right? You don't want things to just be good while you're alive. You want things to literally live on beyond your life. And I think that that is a, a life worth living. I don't know. I think I'm like thinking too much. Probably some existential thing. The meeting lasted like three hours. Everything is okay. <laughs>